Yeah, I'm uh, Frank Reynolds. I'm CEO and uh, uh, chairman of the board and everything at Invivo. I founded Invivo uh, back in 2005 with Bob Langer. I know Gary's on. He recently signed Bob to his board, and he's going to be in for the ride of his life. Uh, you know, working with Bob Langer, who's, for those who don't know, number one in the history of life science patents. He's had over 50 products approved by the FDA or in clinical trials, and uh, just a real dynamite guy. And, you know, I was a patient. I'm kind of that patient CEO who brings urgency to our uh, projects every single day. I was paralyzed 19 years ago, spent over five years in a body brace on my knee and my neck. I've been kind of pacing around the corner because I suffer uh, serious neurological problems and uh, moving around kind of helps a bit. I'm joined today by our new Chief Science Officer, Dr. Ed Worth, and we had a conversation, I guess, to start the uh, meeting here today uh, around Giron, and of course Ed has been the Director of Regenerative Medicine at Giron for the last seven years, running the Human Embryonic Study, and of course with the focus on spinal cord injury for Invivo, a, a monstrous coup, we think, in order to bring it over to us. I've been recruiting for about two years, so great to have him here today. I'm also joined by Sean Moran, my Director of Finance, who's been a public CFO for a life science companies for over 20 years. So. We only have about 15 minutes today, a lot briefer than I normally have, so I'm going to try and get through it. I'm a native New Yorker, so I talk kind of fast. A lot of people uh, comment about it, but uh, if you have any questions, you can follow it with us. Um, again, I've built a, um, you know, a really special team, of course, Bob right there in the middle. I'm not sure for, uh, yeah, we do have a, so I, I found the company with Bob, and probably our first important decision was to bring in two Harvard neurosurgeons to do all of our work. Uh, we had uh, had success in rodents in 2005. We're looking to transfer it into primates and into humans. And uh, there was a lot of debate about whether to go with veterinarians or human neurosurgeons. And I'm really glad we picked two great neurosurgeons from Harvard. And they've crafted and developed, uh, co-developed and co-invented all of our technologies for the last four years. On top of them, actually, at the, before I... Uh, Met Bob, I was director of global business development at Siemens, working for George Nolan. He had taken Siemens public through an ADR back in 2001, was the face of Siemens to uh, Wall Street for a decade, and he was my mentor at Siemens and sent me to MIT to become an XCO of Siemens, where I met Bob. And of course, having a spinal cord injury myself and meeting Bob with the potential to help other people kind of changed my career path. Uh, Rich Roberts won a Nobel Prize in Medicine in 93. Sons of Quadriplegic brings incredible passion to our board every day. And I think in the back I see Adam Stern, uh, Managing Director of Spencer Trask, who take us public last year. You know, I met by Adam last year. I said, I need a million and a half dollars to get the human data. You know, I have monkeys running the first company to ever show therapeutic effect in monkeys. Every one of our treated monkeys respond in a few weeks. The difference between treatment and controls are dramatic. And uh, Adam said he can help me get my money. He said, I'll get you $7 million in a few weeks. And we got $13 million in blue through it and been hitting our stride ever since. It's been a great year for Invivo. So basically, we put the right team together. We're going to flow through um, a product portfolio that's based on biomaterials that leads to regeneration. So our early products are neuroprotection and neuroplasticity-based technologies. And of course, in the end, we'll be a re full-blown regeneration company. We've already had success in using biomaterial scaffolds with human neural stem cells from Harvard in primates. Really excited about that work. We published it in the Journal of Neuroscience Methods back in 2010, and we just won the Apple Award for 2011, which is given to the number one published paper in the world for spinal cord injury research, and that was for our first primate work where we did use human, human neural cells and use biomaterials alone. But basically, you know, it, it, uh, and we've heard some talk about chronic injuries, acute injury, of course, or a different injury. But basically, oops, sorry. Basically, you have about a 21-day period uh, during which bleeding and inflammation results in scarring. And if you can mitigate bleeding and inflammation, you reduce scarring. And if you can spare just 10% of the spinal cord, you're going to get therapeutic recovery. So it's interesting. If you can spare just 10% of this area here, all the tissue below the point of injury remains completely healthy. It gets all the blood it needs. It's ready to be used. So the rule of thumb for spinal cord injury is you lose the use of everything below the point of injury. So if you have a high neck injury, you lose your lungs and your bowels and bladder. But the, the, the parts of the spinal column responsible for the bowels and bladder are ready to be used. They're down to getting all the blood and nutrition they need. Um, so all you have to do is navigate the injured area, and all that other tissue is ready to be used. And that's why our animals recover so quickly. Next, I'm going to ask for some help in the back here. He's going to be clicking our, OK, great. So basically, on the left, uh, we've presented a number of times to the Pentagon. They absolutely love our um, work on the left. On the right, it's more like a car accident. On the left, you'd see more like a bullet wound. Um, what you see here is actually a standard of care. Um, doctors are going to remove bone and put in screws and rods, usually in the first 48 hours after injury. And whereas where we propose that during that procedure, they can simply implant our device into an open wound, or they can inject it um, into a closed wound. Uh, the next slide. Um, let me go to this. This is actually Dr. Woodard, our chief medical officer. Maybe could we get help in the back there to go to the next slide? This is Dr. Woodard. In just one minute, if you watch down here, I don't think we'll play the whole video or 
cut slow on time here, but um, in one minute he customizes the device and implants it into the spinal cord of a monkey. It's a very simple procedure. We tell doctors it'll take them about 10 minutes extra. Probably won't even take that long. So actually you can see here, oops, sorry. Let me try and go back to that. Um, actually, this is going to start over, so we'll skip this. But basically, um, th this slide is very important because it shows the absorption of the blood. We're defeating the inflammation, and people saying, what are you going to do with the blood? How are you going to displace it? Our device is basically about 90% air, so we're actually going to absorb all that blood. And we have a great, at the end of this video, you can see it absorb it right up. Um, here's our injectable version. So this is our true platform technology. Our first product is a true scaffold, a hard pla uh, uh, material. And, well, it's kind of soft, but you could say it's hard, hard, much harder than our gels. And the injectables now bring our family of gels that we've invented with Bob. Um, I'm actually co-inventor now of some of these gels, but what's very important for the chronic conditions is that time release is essential. You're going to need supportive cells. You're going to need time release for drugs. So you have to be able to time release and hold cells and drugs in order to treat these chronic conditions like spinal cord, ALS, MS, and that's what we're doing with our gels. So um, this technology, actually we can go to the next slide. Um, Okay, so the injectable will be actually using a peripheral nerves. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. But this is our, our scaffold in human neural cells from Harvard. Uh, we did this work back in 2008. Actually, the monkey's right leg is walking. This is two days post-op after we paralyze him. His right leg is functioning, but he's sitting on it. So he looks like he's a paraplegic, but he's not. His left leg is paralyzed, and that's the injury we go for. It's called the brown Sicard syndrome, paralyzing the left leg, leaving the right leg functioning. And now we go to the next slide. And here he is at five weeks. No one had ever seen anything like this. Here he was up and walking. It was quite dramatic. Actually, the director of the Primate Center is here today. Uh, Dr. Matt Lawrence is in the back and uh, on our core team, one of our Apple Award winners, too. So, so our first study, of course, gave us the basis for then expending out the study. And we'll go into some of that data in a minute. But um, we have have filed with the FDA recently uh, in July. We're going back and forth with them right now. We have a meeting set up for April 12th. Um, we expect that after that we'll get a letter to direct us to start a human study. Uh, we certainly have a lot of work to do in parallel with that right now, getting our GMP facility up. But again, it has no drugs and no cells, so it gets through the FDA in over, little over a year follow-up. So we basically have one year follow-up, complete report submitted to the FDA, and hopefully get approval. And of course, you know, in our product portfolio, that's our, been our strategy from day one. Get bomb materials through that don't have drugs and cells, that don't have long regulatory paths. Then we take that revenue stream, which in our case will be a billion plus, and then leverage it to expand out our drug leasing technologies for spinal cord, peripheral nerve applications, and others. And of course, leverage out the, the um, technologies and cell technologies. And of course, we're partnering. We've had conversations actually with everybody at this table uh, in the last few months. Um, so you would expect that we'd probably have partner more partnerships as we go forward here, working with the cell tech cell companies. Um, are we running out of time? So, uh, okay. So basically, um, you know, at two weeks, all of our animals are doing great. Here's our second study. Um, you know, at 12 weeks, animals were doing great. No drugs, no cells. Gets through the FDA in only a year. The controls improve a bit. You know, they get back some use of their upper thigh, and they do the swinging motion to uh, try and walk. But the difference between the groups are quite uh, staggering. And I can tell you, this is actual neurons firing inside the monkey's uh, body. We implant EMG systems into the stomachs of the monkeys. We run six wires down our legs and literally fire, monitor the neurons that we are sparing in the spinal cord firing. And that's each one of those peaks is a neuron. So when you compare the data on this, the data is phenomenal. Of course, we have tissue analysis. On the left, you have scarring in our controls. You know, red is dead. And on the right, you have a great amount of neurons. You have a little bit of red, but not much. And of course, because there's not much, you can permeate, the signals can permeate that tissue. So here's an unbelievable uh, uh, assessment tool that we've come across. It was published in the Journal of uh, or Nature Neuroscience, but it uses 149 metrics for assessing a monkey walking after being paralyzed. And you can see the dramatic difference between the two groups, controls versus scaffolds. And this is actually normal here. So you can see how the scaffolds recurve significantly compared to the controls. And of course, now we're being replicated. Actually, the last one that comes up uh, is a group that we've worked with in the past. Uh, some of them are actually at Langer Lab. Um, we've actually reviewed their patents. We don't think they're any threat to ours at all. They're ac very much an academic group. Um, but, um, you know, this is a group that basically says exactly what we just told the FDA. If you take a scaffold without drugs and cells, you implant it into the lesion of a spinal cord and acute injury, it's going to shrink the lesion and restoration of function is going to occur. This was just published in October. Of course, we submitted to the FDA in July. So it's uh, great to see all the people replicating our work. Again, our human study is going to be 10 patients. We'll see where we go. Uh, right now, we plan on Harvard and Geisinger. Um, of course, Ed Worth has just joined us in the last couple of weeks, and he's been running human studies and spinal cord at the FDA for a while. So we're taking some great rep uh, recommendations from Ed. 
uh, for some potential new facilities, but uh, it's a very low-cost study, only a million and a half dollars. Uh, it's an open-label label study, so basically weeks after we do our first patient, we'll be reporting those results to the public and certainly looking forward to showing some good, strong video. But basically the patients will be followed for a year, rehab down in, in, uh, in Atlanta at the Shepherd Center. I think everybody in SCI goes to Shepherd. It's a great facility. You know, we have over 100 patents to protect our technology. We've locked down the manufacturing. We've uh, filed some great manufacturing patents recently. I think if anybody, we basically our patent portfolio covers use of any bomb material to treat any spinal cord injury. So it doesn't matter. Of course, Bob Langer is the founder of the field. We have them all. We have uh, patents for using any bomb material in combination with any drug. So it doesn't matter what drug people have out there. Of course, we prefer FDA approved. And then, of course, the use of any bomb material in combination with any cell. So that's why we have the possibility of speaking with everybody on the panel today, and we are. So, um, you know, the market for us is going to be, we think, very easy to penetrate. We've uh, turned down investments from J&J &J and Synthes. Um, you know, they talk about having thousands of salespeople. I don't need them. Eighty percent of all spinal cord injuries are treated at only 75 level one trauma centers in the U.S. So you have to have a helicopter. You have to have neurosurgeons 24 hours a day. A big city like Boston only has three. New York only has eight. Montana has none. So it's easy to penetrate the market. You basically have 75 customers for the whole U.S. We're forecasting a price of about 60000 per unit. Uh, we can talk about that later, but we think it's going to be a lot higher. Of course, our stock's been on fire lately. We've come a long way in the last few months. Uh, back in August, we kind of implemented a new approach to, uh, to managing our stock and uh, our approach to, to the investors, and we've gotten a very positive response from investors. So we've gone from $0.60 cents to, I guess, about two seventy nine or whatever we are now, $150 million in market cap. We just filed an S3 yesterday for a shelf offering for up to $50 million that will, we think, provide us a lot of flexibility in getting to some of our corporate goals. I remain the largest shareholder in the company. I have about 27% of the company. I um, actually just was able to have my first sale last week of some shares. It's, I still have 97%. Everybody can relax. But, um, you know, it was nice after seven years. I didn't get paid for the first two years. All the classic uh, entrepreneur kind of nightmare stories, uh, including a loss of family. And I uh, finally got a little uh, something last week. But, um, you know, company's doing great. Perf uh, stock performance has been fantastic, outperforming everybody. And, of course, with cost model solo, we've actually here it says $60 million. We haven't even spent that yet. So we have one product at the FDA. We'll have two more going this year. We'll have three products at the FDA by Q3. And uh, we probably will not have spent even the $60 million by then. So it's a difference in bomb materials. You know, it's a lot lower cost model. So the milestones we've hit, we filed our FDA application. We've won the Apple Award for the number one paper in the world. And Matt Lawrence is one of our Apple Award winners in the back. Uh, we've expanded our patents to include <coughs> peripheral nerves. Oops, sorry. The peripheral nerve application is huge. It's a $22 billion market. I'll just mention that and then wrap up. But, you know, we all know people with herniated discs that are having injections in their spine, you know, nerve block shots, cortisone shots. You hear about them. I get them all the time. Well, the drugs only di – they dissipate for about – you know, or dissipate in about 24 to 48 hours. They don't hang around. They, they don't have a lasting effect. It may last a week or two. I, I generally get seven days of relief. Some people get more. Uh, but really, we all know that you need sustained pain uh, delivery. So, um, so we've filed significant patents, developed significant gels to time release uh, pain management or anti-inflammatories into that space. So we, we think we're going to change the paradigm for chronic care. Um, you know, I know it's about a $22 billion market. And um, again, we're going to give everybody a chance that has a back injury outside of a spinal cord injury, um, maybe avoiding surgery and uh, having a better quality of life. So that product hit, hits the FDA this summer. And, uh, you know, from there it will be onward and upward for in vivo. So that's about all I have.